I now have the honor and privilege of introducing the awardee for government to Miss Faith Cornell. Faith works at the State Department, where she started as a presidential management fellow. And over the next 15 years, she racked up a series of remarkable energy and economic accomplishments in overseas and headquarters assignments. And she has since risen to her current position where she manages a $25 million a year power sector program in the state's Bureau of Energy Resources. In this position, she helps partnering governments strengthen their electricity markets and power systems by providing technical assistance with foreign policy goals of advancing decarbonization, grid resiliency, clean energy investment, and greater electricity access. The reach of her team's influence extends to many countries in Asia, Africa, Eastern Europe, Latin America, and the Caribbean. Here are just a few examples. In Ecuador, that country's first ever international tenders for wind and solar projects. In the Caribbean, the first energy sector loan guarantee program with a commercial bank in Jamaica, which de-risks lending for clean energy projects by guaranteeing up to 50% of the loan amount. In Costa Rica, a new regulatory framework for distributed power generation, which incentivizes investments in rooftop solar. In Vietnam and Thailand, new regulations to help integrate variable renewable energy, distributed energy generation, and battery storage onto the grid. In Southern Africa, amended grid codes to increase renewable energy and tariff models for solar energy. Under her leadership, U.S. assistance goes a long way to advance clean energy goals in faraway places with significant benefits for the people who live there and indirectly for the rest of the world. Faith holds master's degrees in public administration and international affairs from the Maxwell School at Syracuse University and a bachelor's degrees in international affairs in Spanish from the University of New Hampshire, where she graduated summa cum laude. Please welcome Faith Cornell, recipient of the 2021 U.S. C3E Award in Government for, and I quote, advancing policies, regulations, or incentives that support the development, deployment, and diffusion of clean energy. Faith, congratulations, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Bob. I would like to thank the C3E Initiative, Department of Energy, Stanford, MIT, Texas A&M, and their partners who made this symposium possible. It is an incredible honor to receive the C3E Award for my work at the U.S. Department of State, our foreign ministry. I would like to thank a few people who gave me room to run and grow along the way. Professor Janet Gold, Ambassador Mel Levitsky, Matt Rooney, Paul Hooper, my husband Carl, and my parents, Roz and Jim. I'd also like to thank the Bureau of Energy Resources, or ENR colleagues, who work on behalf of the American people every day. Helping foreign governments develop stronger energy markets has real impact. ENR is the State Department's team that carries out the president's energy policy overseas and conducts US energy diplomacy. We work to ensure that global markets are stable, our energy uh, partners are, our foreign partners are more energy secure, and today more than ever, that governments deepen commitments to the energy transition. So I would like to share insights how ENR's power sector program does that. And if there are young professionals listening today, especially women, I hope you come away believing that you too can have an energy career. The world needs your ideas and we all have a role to play. Energy is a national security issue. When governments lack independence over their energy infrastructure, they are vulnerable to coercion and market shocks. Energy poor countries have a harder time investing, attracting investment and bringing in jobs or keeping the businesses they already have from leaving. In the US, we sometimes take for granted that our schools and streets are well lit, that we have hot water, or that hospitals have refrigeration for vaccines. In many parts of the world, the grid has not yet arrived and lack of power is a health and safety issue. Where there's power for several hours a day, it's not reliable or affordable, and this all limits a country's ability to fight poverty, including here in the US. Governments want to close these gaps, but face many competing demands. Countries may be risky places to invest, and this increases cost, or they lack experience with advanced technologies. Governments we work with want to increase reliance on renewable power, 
but they need lots of help. Our power sector program brings in independent consultants, legal and financial advisors, U.S. electricity regulators and grid operators, and renewable energy experts. We recommend, recommend changes to laws or regulation, suggest technical norms, provide trainings on distributed generation or integrated resources planning. Grid operators and regulators from Southern Africa or the Caribbean learn from PJN, CAISO, or regulators from here in DC. We help on transparent tenders to invite qualified companies in. We share the expertise of DOE energy labs to fund studies or train engineers. In Vietnam, we are helping the grid operator manage an influx of solar of over 16 gigawatts in under two years. That's more than the combined power supply of Central America. And two weeks ago, when ENR held an energy policy dialogue, we also announced a battery storage pilot project. It's just a great example of technical assistance and policy coming together to advance US foreign policy goals. In this case, we're supporting a more energy secure Vietnam that is increasingly reliant on renewable energy, using battery storage with US technology and decreasing investment in coal. This is a glimpse of US energy diplomacy and how we help governments through these transitions. Cooperation provides tools to go forward and just as important, the confidence. And that's where our, foreign pol our, our power sector program comes in. And this can have much broader benefits for our countries beyond energy. It's so fitting that today's symposium occurs as leaders meet in Glasgow to push for net zero growth. To our future leaders in energy, you too can be an energy diplomat, a climate negotiator, a policymaker, a regulator, an electrical engineer, or a power market economist. We need innovators and scientists to design tomorrow's solutions. We need energy efficiency experts, engineers, and construction workers to build them. We need lawyers to review the deals, bankers to invest, and we need insurance agents to protect investments against climate risk. We will always need communicators, collaborators, risk takers, problem solvers to thread these efforts together as the world's response to climate change. Whatever your path may be, there is a role for you because energy and climate intersect with everything we do. C3E is an amazing honor because it recognizes the contributions of women to the energy transition. It provides a network of people dedicated to helping women succeed and to decarbonization. Thank you again to C3E and its many partners for amplifying what an exciting time it is to be in energy. Thank you.